Hi, my name's Matt Hayes and welcome to Big River Fish. You know, of all the places that I like to go fishing, rivers have got to be my favourite. The river's alive, turbulent and vibrant. It's never the same two days running. And whether you like to catch small fish or big fish, the river's always got something to offer, even on the most dire days. What we'd like to do in this programme is to show you some of the big fish that can be caught from our rivers in this country and from rivers in Europe. But first of all, let's take a trip off to the River Severn. I was brought up in Shropshire, right on the banks of this mighty river, in my parents' riverside cottage. And last summer, I made a return trip and enjoyed some fabulous fishing at the bottom of the garden for that most enigmatic of all river fish, the barbel. The River Severn is a strongly flowing river, as you can see here. This means that the float you use should be large enough to cope with the turbulent conditions. Delicate shotting patterns and light stick floats will not give you the control and the presentation you need to get the bait down to the barbel. The key, of course, is to feed large amounts of hemp seed and maggots, or casters in this case, into the swim until you begin to attract the shoals of waiting barbel. In the summer, some anglers use very large quantities of feed, as much as a gallon of maggots and a gallon of hemp in a day. During this session, I didn't use that much, but I certainly got through four or five pints of hemp and four or five pints of casters. The results speak for themselves. Although time only allows us to show you one of the fish we caught that day, rest assured that the action took place over a period of time with several barbel caught. You'll see here, even while I'm landing this fish, that I'm still feeding bait into the swim. This is to keep the remainder of the shoal interested, because on a river like the Severn, you never know whether the angler on the next swim is going to steal your fish. Catching barbel on the float is probably the nicest way of pursuing this fish. You get to experience not only the heart-stopping fight, but the pleasure of watching the float disappear. And at the end of it all, you've got a beautiful barbel to hold in your hands and admire before slipping back into the water. The tip wrenches over and the corks begin to strain underneath your arm. It's a familiar sensation for the feeder fisherman. Bites with this style of fishing tend to be ferocious, and in this day, it was no exception. This was the first of a number of fish which fell to this approach, one that is ideally suited to fast-flowing, deep rivers, allowing the angler to concentrate lots of feed in a fairly confined area, Bites when feeder fishing are pretty unmistakable, but one thing you should look out for is twitching on the tip prior to that telltale wrench. The twitching on the tip isn't often small fish as one might suspect, but is actually barbel banging into the feeder and into the line in their desperation to get at the bait. It's important that if you're getting lots of knocks and rattles, as I was in this case, and the bait is unmarked, that you leave those to develop into full-blooded bites. This fish gave a full-blooded wrench, having been preceded by a series of pulls and taps and knocks for some 10 minutes before the rod tip actually flew round.
As the ledger weights from the opposite bank began to fly across, my dad arrived to see me really get stuck into some good barbel. A switch to the feeder ensured that I managed to keep the fish in front of me and not pinched by the tremendous number of anglers that was building up on the far bank. There were whole families fishing there. But on a magic day like this, when the fish are in front of you, it's a tremendous feeling to walk away from the river with it getting dark at about half past four in the evening, knowing that you've had the very best in barbel fishing. I suppose barbler are more frequently associated with rivers like the Severn and the Trent and the mighty Hampshire Avon than any other type of waterway. But I can assure you that barbel can be found in surprisingly small streams. And when you do find them in very snaggy areas, you've got to employ hit and hold tactics. Nowadays, I live in Buckinghamshire and my local river, the Great Ouse, is a typical small barbel river. Let's take a look and a big fish being caught in a swim that leaves no room for finesse. This beautiful Great Ouse Barbel weighed 8 pounds 13 ounces. It was caught on Bolt Rig's sweet corn, sweet corn that had been flavoured and dyed. The corn was orange and the flavour I chose was rich strawberry. I've no doubt that on the day this fish would not have looked at normal sweet corn. Barbel are probably our hardest fighting river fish. But another fish that will certainly set my pulse racing is the pike. Pike fishing on rivers is all excitement and action, and there's no better place to get a pike to give a good account of itself. One of the top pike anglers in this country must be Bob Baldock. And very recently, Bob took a trip out again onto the River Ouse to a small pool that has formed on the side of the river. And when the river comes into flood, all the food fish move into the pool. And behind them are the big pike.
in this sequence, we're at the river pool as it's flooded and the, the fishing goes very well. And there is a few mishaps. I got quite a large pike, which I put in the sack so we could photograph it on the bank. And uh, when we returned to the bank to photograph, it had gone. And unfortunately, I didn't get the weight, but it's a fish close to 20 pounds. And um, we had a very interesting day, quite a number of smaller fish. That sounds like the pike swam off with the sack. I've got to ask you that, because I think that's what people will be thinking. Is, is that what actually happened? No, what happened was that, because um, I was so excited, I unhooked the pike in the boat and then popped it into the sack and tied the sack to the side of the boat, but unfortunately it didn't do the sack up properly and um, we carried on for a little longer fishing and um, then we decided we'd go in to, to photograph the fish and when we got in we had the sack but no fish. I, I mentioned that Bob because I've been fishing with you many times and I know that uh, mistakes of that nature just don't get made by Bob Bulldog but you know, for the purpose of everyone else, I felt I ought to mention. Yeah, we all make mistakes occasionally. And it's that's fishing sometimes, isn't it? Well, Bob made that look pretty simple, both playing that fish and unhooking it. But it's not really that easy. When you're unhooking pike, you've got to take a lot of care. A, to avoid a lacerated hand, and B, to make sure this fish, which looks so fearsome, but is really quite gentle and delicate, isn't damaged. But after seeing Bob land a 20 pound plus fish, I was desperate for a go myself. So I persuaded him to take me out in the boat a few days later, and lo and behold, I managed to snare one. With Bob at my side, he expertly guided me through, landing an 18 pound fish, not as big as Bob's, but a very nice result.
18 dead. 18 one. Let's turn now to another famous predator angler, Ray Armstrong. Ray holds the current British record for Xander, but he's also very fond of pike fishing. We joined Ray recently on a trip to the River Severn, where he managed to get to grips with some pike from this mighty river. Be a nice
Let's move away now from the colder winter months and look at the river in summer. One of my favourite summer fish is the bream, a fish more fond of gently and sedately flowing currents. The River Ouse in Buckinghamshire near my home holds some good shoals of bream and the particular stretch you're going to see contains fish to over 10 pounds in weight. The bream fishing there in the summer can be really spectacular as myself and my father proved a few short months ago. Just like the crab trees, we're going to use float tactics for these bream, laying baits on the bottom of the river in the deep, steady flow. The bait's cast out, and I'm using strong tackle here, strong line, because you can see that I'm fishing over a very dense weed bed, and I don't want to lose any bream that I hook. The swim has been baited heavily with sweet corn and mashed bread. Let's see what happens. got a fish on here, I've got to hold it very, very hard out of the cabbages. This is really strong gear and there's just absolutely no room for finesse whatsoever. This is not exactly purest stuff, but believe me, there's just no way we'd get the fish out if we didn't use these real hit and hold tactics. Oh, oh. there you go. How about that? 10 seconds of pure adrenaline there. That's what's responsible for all those line bites, those dark shapes gliding around in the water and the hooks come out in the net. But that is a perfect river bream. Not slimy, beautiful and bronze and gold can't really mistake bream for anything else, certainly not when they're this size, this great big long anal fin, beautiful purple tail, this bronze and gold back. And what I find absolutely gorgeous about these river bream is this coloration around the gill cover here. It really is superb. That's a lovely fish and I'm hoping that we'll get a few more of those just like Crabtree did. I must confess, as a big fish angler myself, that I tend to use large hooks and big lines when I'm fishing for whatever the species. But you don't always have to do that. And personally, I learn an awful lot from some of the country's leading matchmen. One of the leading matchmen is none other than Dave Harrell. Dave's a superb river angler and an England international. Let's take a look at Dave's method for catching chub on light lines on the Warwickshire Avon, near Evesham. And there's the culprits. That's why we've been losing fish in this particular swim. They're all about that size. Um, all the early fish we caught were around about sort of six to eight ounce. Obviously now, because we've stepped the feed up, the bigger fish have moved in. You can see from that particular fish, we've still got weed on the hook. It tried to snag me up. But because we've got the stronger hook length on, it gives us a much better chance of getting the fish out. There's not much bait inside the fish. Uh, and it would appear still there's a lot of fish present. So hopefully, now we've tackled, when I've actually scaled the, uh, the hook length and the terminal tackle up, we can go on to catch a few more fish.
most been a cracking day's fishing. Let's just see exactly what we have caught. Some of these better fish, I feel certain that I wouldn't have got them out without the heavier tackle. What well, the scales actually go up to, Ernie? 20. 20 pounds. Try to that. Yeah. That could be nice if we could weigh this in at every match. Dead on. Eight, twelve, fourteen, fifteen pounds, fifteen dead pounds. Song. Three. Seventeen three. Lovely. Thanks, Ernie. Thirty-two right. pound three ounce. Excellent. Sometimes it's nice to spend a day out in a single swim, trotting a float with light tackle for a bag of fish, catching some small ones and some larger fish. But I much prefer to fish just for the bigger chub. And my approach is very different to Dave Harrell's. I like to get on a small intimate river and drop large baits on heavy tackle into tiny nooks and crannies all the way along its length. I rely on stealth, concealment and mobility and I catch an awful lot of big chub that way, as this next sequence shows. <laughs> It didn't really seem to matter what I put on the hook. I kept on getting bites.
So far in this video, we've looked at some spectacular big river fish. But of course, in this country, we haven't got the real giants. For the real giants, you've got to go abroad. Let's take a visit to Spain now, once again with Bob Baldock, but this time with big catfish and carp angler Kevin Maddox for company. Bob and Kevin made this trip to the River Ebro where they encountered one of the largest freshwater fish of them all, the Danubian wells or catfish.
not really. That is a big fish. Right, I'm gonna go to the bank. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to go fully. Oh. Right, are we gonna do this in one swoop? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Fish, mate. <laughs> Hold it down. <laughs> Bloody hell. Look at your weight, Alistair. Crikey. That must be getting over 100, mustn't it? Yeah. <sighs> Let's have a roll. Have a look. Look at the shoulder on it. Small bait that was as well. It's not always big fish, big bait, uh, is it? Big bait, big cat. That's always your road, mate. Two pounds to come off for the weight of the neck, the sack. I don't know if I'm going to be able to lift this, am I? No. It's always a problem. I might have to do it again, eh? Well, it... What you got? Well, I've got bang on a hundred pounds on there at the moment. And <laughs> you've got two pounds to you go on. Have you? Yeah. I'll have to do it again, hang on. That's not quite going to be a hundred, then. Yeah. Spanish record's 99, you better look at this carefully. Yeah, I'm glad you got... <coughs> yeah, we... Unfortunately, you're not going to get that, mate. <laughs> you're going to get 98, though. <coughs> yeah, it's slightly under the hundred. Take a couple of pounds off for the swing. What, 97? 97 and a half, 98. They can grow to 500 pounds. That's quite amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Just lay that there like that, look. Yeah, let me lay on the back. Because I'm five five. You're going to get dirty. Yeah. <laughs> One, two stills would be nice. Oh dear. I think, like, would you? There's such a difference in some. <laughs> yeah. Go <Got> on. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you'll agree that those giant catfish from the River Ebro were pretty spectacular. But spectacular fishing is available in this country too, on all of our rivers. They don't have to be big. This tiny, intimate stream in the heart of Oxfordshire, the River Windrush, is packed with fish, chub up to four or five pounds, roach to over two pounds. It offers wonderful sport. I'm afraid that this video is coming to a close. I haven't done much good in this spot, but that's the great thing about river fishing. I'll say goodbye for now, and I'll look forward to moving just around the corner where there's sure to be a few fish lurking. Good fishing.